Project 60 is short wind power. This allows you to charge the capacitor to power either the yellow LED or horn by using wind on the windmill. The voltage meter is set to the 5 volt setting. When I spin the windmill counterclockwise, the meter will record voltage and the red LED may also light depending on how strong the current is. But then you would push the press switch and due to the capacitor storing energy, either the LED would light up briefly or the horn would make a very slight sound depending on which setting the switch is on. If the switch is set to the C position, it will power the yellow LED. If it is set to the B position, it will power the horn. But I can't get this circuit to work, so I just want to tell you the basic principle and how you would use it if it worked. Another project I can get to work is the wind horn. With the voltage meter set to the 5 volt setting, I will spin the windmill counterclockwise and you should hear the horn make a quick chirping sound. Yep. Because this time the windmill is producing current that flows through the horn and it is be the voltage is being recorded. This circuit can be a basic principle on how windmills in real life are used for producing electricity. Oftentimes they're used on farms where there are dozens, if not hundreds, of wind turbines that spin, that are spun by the wind to produce electricity to power large neighborhoods or towns. Of course, what is problematic is that the energy can only be pow collected when the wind is blowing at a minimum speed. Otherwise, they would not be effective. Project 62 through 65 will be for informative purposes only because I cannot demonstrate them. I do not have the appropriate things, but I will demonstrate projects 66 and 67 later. But first I am going to explain 62, liquid battery. For this project, you would fill the compartments of the liquid holder with a soda, particularly cola, but you could use other one flavors as well. And the meter should show a voltage of about three volts on that setting. And then switch the meter to the 0 0.5 milliamp setting to measure the current. And move the copper electrode with the snap on it over to the next compartment as what is shown in figure A. So you can like include just two or three compartments or all four. And your actual results may vary because this meter is not very accurate like I have mentioned when demonstrating other projects. And the voltage will only be like for every compartment will be only about a quarter of the voltage produced. You could also use other liquids like water or juice as well. Here they explain about cola flavored soda which is lightly acidic and so in a way it has similar characteristics to a natural battery which uses chemicals to produce power. And this maybe could be a common type of energy production that relates to this project is biomass production in which decaying food products and yard waste are burned because 
they use garbage and they do not create as much pollution. That garbage being burned will not end up in a landfill. Project 63 is juice battery. You can use fruit juice instead of soda and sour tasting juices such as lemon or grapefruit are best. And then you would measure the voltage and current just like you did for the previous project. And you can compare them as well, compare the different juices that you use. Now it's important that after you use the liquid holder for any projects, make sure you wash it out thoroughly as well as the electrodes because they could get corroded by the liquids that you have used and may no longer work. Using fruit juices like lemon juice for producing power is a very environmentally friendly way to do so because it does not create any pollution. Project 64, Cola Light, uses the LED, the red LED. You will fill the compartments of the liquid holder with soda, especially cola, even though you can use others, and then set the slide switch to position B to measure the voltage produced by the uh, soda. And then move the switch to position C to include the red LED in the circuit. It might be dim because this is not a perfect energy source and over time the LED will become brighter as the cola reacts with the electrodes to make electricity. And then remove the meter from the circuit and the LED may be brighter because the meter actually acts like a resistor when in place as explained over here. But without it, all the current can flow through the LED in this case. You can move the copper electrode that has the snap on it over to the next compartment if you want to use fewer compartments of soda, although the current will be, although the LED will be dimmer because less power is being produced. If the copper and zinc electrodes get corroded through use, use sandpaper, steel wool, or scraper to remove the corrosion and improve performance. Project 65 uses the yellow LED instead of the red one. And you would uh, it has the same principle as Project 64, but you would compare the brightness of the yellow LED with the red one as well as voltage change. The yellow LED requires more voltage to be powered. Now what's interesting is that if you had pipes that pumped fresh cola into the liquid cells and removed some of the used liquid, then that would represent a fuel cell and you would have a continuous source of power as long as that flow was maintained. Some devices, especially cars, may use fuel cells for power because it's very clean. It may be more expensive than gasoline, for instance, but it's much better for the environment and air because no pollution is being generated. The first project I can demonstrate using the liquid holder is 66, electricity from water. I filled the four compartments of the liquid holder with water and the red jumper wire will be connected to the copper electrode on one end of the holder. And now we will see how much voltage the water produces. And it looks like it produces just over half of a volt. And then we can move the meter switch over to the 0 0.5 milliamp setting and it looks like we have just over one milliamp of current. And lastly for 50 milliamps the current is too low to rec for the meter to record on that setting. Now on the 0 0.5 MA 
for 50 MA settings, you can push the press switch, which includes a 47 ohm resistor that is in the pivot stand to the circuit, and it will limit the current to the point in which it is unreadable. It should not be used with the 5 volt meter setting. There are two resistors in this pivot stand, remember. An optional variant includes dissolving salt in the water in the compartments and the voltage and current should be higher. If you have distilled water, you can test it out too, although make sure you rinse the salt water first. And then the voltage and current should be zero. Salt water is more conductive than clear water. So it's going to produce more power. Another project that I can demonstrate is 67, water light. The slide switch will be on position C and the meter on the 5 volt setting. Right now, the voltage produced is just under half a volt. I filled all four compartments of the liquid holder with water, with regular water, tap water, and the red LED sh may or may not be on, be and it looks like it's not because the voltage produced is not enough to light the LED. And then if you switch, if you move the slide switch to position B, the voltage may be higher because the water is not really trying to light the LED. I'm going to, there's just an, maybe an ever so slight increase in voltage, but it's almost unnoticeable. You can try replacing the red LED with the yellow one, and you would probably think that it would be even more difficult to light it because the yellow LED requires even greater voltage to work. But you could also do the clock. The clock may or may not work because the clock uses a much lower voltage than either the LEDs, but it looks like it's not strong enough. Now, an interesting note is that salt and other impurities in the water react with electrodes to produce electricity. So like water that has impurities is much more effective at producing electricity than that without it. Distilled drinking water has nearly no impurities, and so it would be very bad at producing electricity. The voltage produced by the water is usually lower and then like cola, for example, and the water will not run the LED or clock as long. I think I'll actually be able to demonstrate project 68 and 69. 68 is cola clock, and although I'm not using cola and just using water, when I tried it, the clock seemed to work great. The clock uses very little energy, so it may run for a while as the water reacts with the electrodes attached to the compartments. Now with cola, the clock may run for about a week, and then you can replace it as the display of, on the clock dims, and then you can move the copper electrode with the snap on it over to the next compartment, and less power will be produced since there are fewer compartments with water that are being utilized. And there are instructions on how to set the clock, which I'm not going to do, but the clock does work. This project includes the C5 capacitor so that if I was to disconnect the liquid holder from the clock, it will still run for a very short while because if I was to remove it without the capacitor, the clock's memory will be lost. Many digital clocks do not have a built-in memory so that whenever the power is disconnected, 
all time and alarm settings will be lost and you'll have to reset them all over again. And that can be annoying, especially if you have an area prone to power outages. But a lot of clocks have some sort of automatic setting system or backup battery system to maintain time and alarm settings regardless of what happens. Now once again I am using water instead of cola or other liquids but I'm going to disconnect the liquid holder from the clock and the capacitor runs the clock for a short period of time. I forget how long it may actually run it for a while but at that point I can quickly refill the compartments with water and then reconnect the clock. And now I don't have to worry about the memory being lost because now it should last me a while again.